What if there was a device that increased muscle growth, boosted blood flow, and even balanced hormones in only a short amount of time and with minimal effort? Well, that's just what our guests today help bring to the market with these specialized blood flow restriction bands. This is the story of Katsu with Stephen Muntones. Stephen, nice to join. Thank you very much for having me. Now, I heard a blood flow restriction before this idea of it actually came to me years ago when I was in a dentist chair and my dentist who I know said, have you heard about this thing where you put these things over your arms and you restrict blood and it helps in all these ways? And I said, that sounds wild, but let me look into it. But I know you have your own story of how you came about this is specifically to Katsu and how you started the company with Dr. Soto. Can you go into that story of what led you into understanding of BFR and the uh, Katsu approach to it? Yeah, so it was, it was back in 2001 um, when uh, at the time I was part of this uh, project, the uh, 22nd Century Project in Japan, which actually looked forward 100 years. So the Japanese government and the Japanese private sector, including the medical community, looked forward 100 years in the future. What do people need to do now in order to be healthy, strong, resilient, et cetera, 100 years from now? Of course, it was more of a thought experiment than anything. One of the one of the um, modalities that uh, I was part of was katsu. And Katsu was an invention or is an invention of Dr. Sato in Tokyo, Japan. And I literally accidentally met him because at the time I was um, serving as a volunteer swim coach for the U.S. national swim team. World championships were in um, Fukuoka, Japan. I had a pass. That means I could get on the deck. I could go around. I saw these Japanese athletes with bands around their arms, which I thought was quite strange. (laughs) <laughs> as they're preparing for the finals at a world championships. Later, I asked the coach, what, what were your athletes wearing? They said, Katsu, why don't we introduce you to our doctor? And that's when I met Dr. Sato back in 2001. I asked him what it was about. And he said, do you speak English? We were speaking Japanese at the time. I said, yes. He said, do you travel outside of Japan? I said, uh-huh. yes. And he says, oh, I've been looking for someone like you, because at the time, Katsu had been limited to the Japanese market and the Japanese physicians and and consumers. And so I just raised my hand. I was the right person at the right time. And I, I went forward. Amazing. It's it's always that right timing of everything. Yes. Uh, you know, but I, I I happen to know as part of your story, you experience a health scare with a, a heart attack as well. And the BFR kind of played into that and Katsu played into that. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I, I always love to link it to also the, the health challenges we have lead us into different directions. Yes. So this is in 2016. So dial forward 15 years. I'd been doing uh, Katsu for 15 years. I was very uh, familiar with it. In fact, we I spent 10 years with a team of cardiologists at the University of Tokyo working with people with cardiac issues, heart attack, stroke, um, heart bypass, uh, uh, stents, et cetera, who were using Katsu to rehabilitate themselves. Well, come 2016, I unfortunately pushed myself way too hard. I had three trips back and forth between California, Southern California, when I live, and Tokyo. Three round trips in 11 days, and it was just way too much. I came off of the airplane. My peripheral vision had narrowed. My wife said I I didn't look well. Picked me up from the airport. I went straight to bed. The next morning, I walked down the um, stairs to our house and just face planted. Um, I had what they call a widow maker, um, a clot in my uh, artery. Uh, my six, 17-year-old son at the time actually gave me um, hands-only CPR. He kept me alive. He's my uh, hero. Uh, I was taken to the, to the local um, hospital. Um, nine days later, I was, I was put in what they call the Arctic Sun Protocol. So they sort of freeze you. They reduce your... your um, uh, core body temperature, tried to minimize the damage to everything. 
And uh, the doctor had told my my wife at the time, oh, um, your husband may have severe neurological damage when he gets out, basically because I wasn't breathing or or my heart wasn't beating for a while, although I was being treated by my son or the, the paramedics. Make a long story short, I woke up um, and I asked the doctor, I said, uh, I'd like to do katsu as part of my rehabilitation. Now, my cardiologist at the time had never heard about katsu. Nobody had really heard about katsu at the time. But I had this 10-year period of training by cardiologists who had used katsu for their cardiac rehab. So I called them up and they said, well, Steve, you know what to do. And it's your body. It's your technology. Just go for it. So I literally used my own technology to help me rehabilitate um, from this Widowmaker heart attack in 2016. Incredible. It was right there for you, basically yeah. waiting for you to you know, help improve yeah. yourself on the recovery path. Yeah. T- talk us through some of those mechanics of Katsu. Let, let, let's go first with the general mechanics and then how it can help with neurological issues or cardiac issues. Yes. So you have these uh, narrow pneumatic bands that either go on your upper arms or upper legs and they inflate and they inflate um, actually in a unique oval shape. So it, it's mechanically what happens is the arterial flow goes into the limb, either your arm or leg. So in other words, your regular heartbeat, blood is flowing into your limbs, whether your arms or legs, but these bands inflate and deflate every 30 seconds. And what that really does is it slows down the venous flow. So you've got regular amount of blood going in and every 30 seconds, the blood coming back out, the venous flow is slowed down. What that actually does is you get an engorgement of blood, either in your arms or your legs, that increases the elasticity of your capillaries and veins. And voila, that is why the cardiologists were using it for all of these patients. And in fact, our key patent is very specifically um, addressing increasing the elasticity or the resilience of the vascular tissue in the body. So I knew, even though my cardiologist said, I, I wouldn't do this if I were you, he, he had just saved my life. He just put a stent in my artery. And, and I said, doctor, I, I know you don't know it, but I know it. And he sort of looked at me shaking his head. Um, but I knew that this would actually help my vascular tissue be more, uh, become more elastic, which, you know, as you mentioned in the um, introduction, it helps uh, blood, uh, blood circulation, then leads to a, a variety of, um, biochemical reactions in the brain. And we can discuss that uh, as we move forward. Yeah, no, it's 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 really interesting because it is a little bit counter, right? Intuitive, you'd say. <laughs> if you're trying to, you know, improve something, you think more blood flow, release it, get nutrients, everything, improve oxygenation. So it, it kind of goes against that. But now, now tell us, because a lot of people are thinking, all right, blood flow restriction and katsu, they're saying synonymous, but you're saying there's a vast difference between Correct. the katsu approach and just regular bands. And I've seen these. You could just get a band. You could tie one off on the top, basically, with a shoestring and call that blood flow restriction. Um, so, so tell us about that, that differential between katsu and most of what we're seeing in the market in BFR. Yeah, so BFR, blood flow restriction, is literally that, restriction. So the arterial flow going in, the venous flow coming back out, it's restricted in some way. The tightening of the bands, um, some of them are uh, blood pressure cuffs, some of them are modified blood pressure cuffs or tourniquets, and you know the least expensive ones are simply rubber bands. Um that actually starts at what we call occlusion. So you you put it very tight and then you loosen it up. Uh, and that that's just like when we're taking our blood pressure, uh, you know, when you, you feel that tightness uh, uh, on the uh, on your arm, that is actually restricting the blood flow going into the arm and actually out. And that is why it's called blood flow restriction. Katsu comes from the exact opposite end of the spectrum. 
we put on the bands without doing anything at all. So that is the point of homeostasis. So your regular, your body is at its normal in its normal condition. Then we slightly, very slightly, very gently increase the compression. And we do that by inflating the bands and we inflate them just ever so. And think of it as if you're going to go for a, a two mile run or a, you, you want to do something very vigorous, you always start off very gently, very slowly. If you're going to do a 10K run, you walk out of the house, you start stretching, you maybe do a, a little bit of a, a, a warm up walk, then you get into a jog, and then gradually you start your running pace. Same thing with your vascular tissue. We start off in homeostasis, regular blood flow in and out. Then we compress through inflating the bands ever so slightly. And a lot of people tell us, I don't feel anything when they start katsu. And it's exactly what we want them to, to feel. We don't want them to feel anything because they normally wouldn't feel their veins or their capillaries anyway. Then as the process goes, and, and we'll call one set about a five minute um, uh, procedure, the bands gradually inflate more and more, which means that the blood, the return blood is slowing down more and more. Now, we can't feel the difference emotionally, psychologically, but our capillaries and veins do. And so when you look at your palm of your hands, it's a normal color. And then gradually it gets pinker and pinker. And for some people who are what we call vascularly healthy, it becomes quite uh, like a beefy red, if you will. And so what we do here is that is how we're engorging all of the tiny capillaries from your fingertips to, you know, your armpit. Now, people say, well, if you're just working on your arms, what about your legs? What about your core? I have a broken rib. I have a broken clavicle. What happens outside of the limbs where we have the bands on? Well, actually, we have one vascular system. If we impact one part of our vascular system, let's say our arms, we are also impacting the rest of the body. And we, we can get a little bit technical there, but that's... I think that's uh, where I can stop at this point. No, no, it's it's a holistic measure. You know, even when you do some treatments, let's say you do some type of, uh, you know, blood therapies, you only need sometimes to treat a small portion to get the whole circulatory system, give those benefits. So it's, it could be understandable that way. As far as the mechanic, let's go back a little bit. Okay. You did a good job with some of the um, uh, cardiovascular improvements there. As far as muscle gains go, because that's what you really see a lot of this on is are people in the gym or athletes, as you said. How, how is that working in actually improving muscle development? So, so when you have the bands on and the arms or legs are engorged in blood, simple movement becomes much more difficult. So if you have, let's say, a 10-pound uh, uh, dumbbell and you're doing bicep curls, you know, uh, relatively simple. It, some people, maybe, you know, a large NFL lineman, he could do that all day. Someone who's 75 and have has a stroke, 10 pounds is too much. Two pounds may be too much. Maybe a pound is all they can do. But what these bands do is when the, the limb is engorged in blood, that simple movement, whether it's opening and closing of hands, maybe it's stretching, maybe it's something like a bicep curl or a push-up, becomes more and more difficult. What happens is when you have the blood pooled in the limbs, uh, I'm sorry, when you have blood pooled in the vascular tissue, the lactate builds up quite quickly. The lactate, that, that uncomfortable uh, feeling that uh, you know that 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 waste product that builds up in the in in the limbs, that makes it more and more difficult. So you can have, let's say, an injured NFL lineman who maybe pulled his bicep um, or or a tendon, or you can have that seventy five year old who has had a stroke do very simple movement, and that lactate is building up very comfortably, uh, very uh, quickly. That lactate goes up through the central nervous system, up to our brain, in our pituitary gland, right behind our eyeball. And then that, as a result, secretes 
growth hormone, human growth hormone, the stuff that, you know, most bodybuilders and athletes understand as, as a, as a mul- uh, uh, muscle building uh, molecule. So basically we're using the bands, engorge the lemon blood, that leads to lactate buildup, that leads to a secretion of growth hormone, and that leads to a muscle building, muscle strengthening uh, effect. Yeah, this seems like something that everyone could kind of take advantage of if you're in that realm of, you know, going to the gym, working out, trying to improve, of course, your your muscular health there. And now let's get into a little bit, maybe more of the neurological uh, impact it could have. Yes. Do, you, do, you, do you see any patients that have neurological I- issues using Katsu to their benefit? We actually have a lot of um, wounded warriors, um, people who have been injured either in war or training. Uh, also, people have been injured, car accidents or mountain climbing accidents, et cetera. And here, the same way that the vascular tissue dilates, you know, it, uh, expands, becomes more resilient in your bicep, your forearm, your core, your quads, your calves, the same thing occurs or a similar thing occurs in the capillaries of your brain. So we've done multiple testing from China, Japan, uh, the UK, uh, here in the United States. Uh, very simple. We we can put a, a EEG a skull cap on, measure brain waves, and with the cuts bands on, we simply ask the patient, for example, to open and close their hands. Nothing vigorous. They're not sweating. It, it, it isn't... Uh, uh, too taxing uh, physiologically. But when we do that, we see an increase in alpha waves. We see an increase in the the capillary action in the brain. And, and it's, uh, it's helped people like a wounded warrior with traumatic brain injuries who, because of their traumatic brain injuries, let's say, have not been able to drive. Now, now this process isn't uh, do it once or twice. We're talking months or years with people who've, who've taken a, a bullet to the head or had blast injury, et cetera. And we can get them to the point where they can read things, they can uh, drive a vehicle, and all those practical things that increases the quality of life. So through the bands, we're impacting cognitively what the individual can do, see, realize, speak, et cetera. Um, and and they can do it in the comfort of their home. They can, of course, do it in the gym. They can, of course, do it in a physical therapy clinic. But what we see is the more you do it, the more the quicker your improvement will be. And that's why we've we've grown. We've grown from you know Dr. Sato in Japan uh, doing this to the Japanese, doing this for the Japanese, and we're you know in 49 countries, and it's it's literally word of mouth. And people like yourself who, you know, discuss with myself and our staff and we just spread the word. Yeah, it's really interesting how it's impacted in so many other ways than just, let's say, muscle, you know, neurologically, cardiovascular, everything is interconnected. But I even had recently Dr. Mark Tomerdahl on who runs something called Brain Gauge that's basically testing reaction time for brain function and, you know, looking at something like this even to help improve because he was finding all the different ways that improve that reaction time, especially with a lot of athletes, but just in general, people with those neurological issues and how their brain functions to speed up reaction time. Is that something you're seeing also in athletes? So let's say the competitive swimmers there and everything, that it's not just about muscles. It is impacting your neurological system to improve almost the muscle twitch time and speed of reactions. Correct. Uh, and it, it, consider what an athlete does. They spend most of the year training. Then they go to competition. Some athletes thrive on competition. Some athletes are quite nervous. And most of the people are somewhere in between. What we want to do with Katsu is pr- help prepare that athlete, not only muscularly, but also vascularly and then cognitively. So for that athlete who is, let's say, preparing for their first Olympics or their first NCAA championship, or even trying to get on a varsity team, um, usually, you know, if if you had a, a pulse oximeter or a, even your own coach, you can see the nervousness of that athlete. 
you could just feel it. They're not talking. They're they're not blinking. They're they're not uh, breathing well, etc. So what happens is we use the cuts bands in in these particular cases to actually activate their parasympathetic parasympathetic nervous system, calm them down basically, so they can utilize their 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 developed physicality in addition to being optimal you know on an emotional psychological level so they can perform at their best and we we have athletes who do this prior to a to nba slam dunk contest to in between um uh, uh, um periods in in ice hockey games or that an individual who is preparing for you know let's say um uh, that tryout in front of the pros, in front of a high school coach, et cetera. So we use it in a variety of ways. And we had um, a, a, a team of IOC, International Olympic Committee, sports scientists um, at the University of Brighton and also in, in Spain and, and um, uh, Switzerland who have used Katsu and they've tested cognitively what the protocols do to help those athletes perform better on all kinds of scales, physical scale, cognitive scale. And so let's say you're a, an archer or a, a, a you know, someone who is in a, in a shooting contest or even something like, um, you know, a, a bowler, um, you know, you want to be cognitively optimized. So, and calm but with a healthy amount of adrenaline so you are able to achieve whatever your goal is on the athletic field yeah really really fascinating that's being used in in so many different ways even for that performance enhancement now you mentioned you know you have these ioc scientists that are able to study the data but what what sort of analytics does the, does the device feedback to the user or what sort of feedback does a user get in using katsu so it, it depends what product um, people are using. We have a very sophisticated product with we we utilize with a Massimo uh, finger pulse oximeter that can measure everything from a respiratory rate to uh, 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 perfusion index, et cetera. So that gets pretty com- pretty complex, and everybody uh, you know other than let's say an Olympic athlete, a professional athlete, or a uh, special operations, uh, you know, special forces um, uh, soldier, they don't really need that. They can actually feel and sense. Let's say my parents in their 80s or my sisters in their 50s, example, for example, they fundamentally feel better mm-hmm. after katsu than on a day not doing katsu. So a lot of the feedback is usually more psychological and physical. Let's say uh, for that for that uh, older man who um, their sense of balance is off, or uh, you know they they have a problem because may have, maybe they have a frozen shoulder or something. Just washing their hair or putting on, or let's say a female who's you know putting on mascara and and she just doesn't do that as well as she did when she was in her 20s. We more focus on and we ask our customers, what do you want to achieve? What is the thing that you would like most to do? Most people are more focused on a quality of life issue. Mm-hmm. Um, they they come to us because they've had a, a, a hip surgery. They come to us because they have all kinds of, of, of physical ailments. And, you know, so them, it's simply... I'd like to walk my dog again. I'd like to be able to throw a Frisbee for my dog. I can't move my shoulder like this, or I don't have the strength to move it. So we work on whatever the the, uh, customer, the patient would like to achieve. Once we get them to that point and they realize, oh, we had a, a professor at the Harvard Medical School. He actually hadn't been able to give a lecture in about a year and a half, he couldn't raise his arm to write on the whiteboard. We said, Professor, what you know, what do we like to do? He says, look at I because of he had some, some arthritis, some other issues. And he said, you know, 
I want to write on a whiteboard so my students can actually see or you know, uh, see what I'm writing as opposed to just verbal. And he, you know, achieved that within six weeks. You know, and he was a very happy camper. He was back being a professor in front of the whiteboard. So again, what is the feedback that people get to specifically answer your question? It's actually based on what their goal is. And some people literally want to get stronger. They want to uh, 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 be stronger on a bench press or uh, they want to increase the vertical leap. And so we have literally several hundreds of protocols for people to uh, to do in order to achieve, you know, washing their hair, writing on a whiteboard, increasing their vertical leap or or just doing a push up. We've had many men who said, you know, I can't even tie my shoes without sitting down, you know. So that is the goal that we, that is a feedback and that is a goal that we identify with the customers and that we aim to help them achieve in a short period of time. Purpose and intention when you're healing are so essential. You have to know what you're aiming for, right? Because sometimes the expectations of, you know, if you're 70 or 80 to feel 18 again, probably aren't going to happen. Maybe, but (laughs) likely not. But yeah, if you have that intention of just being able to raise your hand, as you mentioned, because you couldn't, I mean, yeah. that, that's a remarkable thing. If you can't raise your hand, then you can. That's that's an amazing, uh, you know, accomplishment for many. Yeah. So, you know, as far as the optimal frequency and duration, is there, is this a everyday device for an hour? Is there optimal? Is there too much? Um, yes, there is. Uh, we believe you should do it every day. Okay. Um, and many people do it two or three times a day. And when I say do it, I would say between 20 and 30 minutes. A lot of people say, oh my God, I, you know, that's a lot of work you're asking me to do two or three times a day at 30 minutes a piece. And we said, no, 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 no. Our concept is what we call double stacking. Mm -hmm. So in other words, do katsu, put our bands on as you're doing something else. If if you're working from home, if you're a reporter, uh, if you're a researcher and you're in front of your laptop, you're, you're in the laboratory or you're in the office, put it on while you're working. Your work is your primary goal, but you're still getting the benefit of this engorgement of, of blood in the limbs and then the subsequent um, uh, hormonal response. So it, don't look at it like I got to do this every day or I got to do this twice a day. Look at it like continue your life, continue what you do on a daily basis and throw on the bands as you do whatever you're doing. It could be walking the dog. As you walk the dog, put the leg bands on. It could be washing your car or washing the or cleaning your, you know, your, your, your kitchen cabinet or kitchen uh, countertop. Just put them on, the bands on and you're going to clean the kitchen cabinet anyway. You're going to walk the dog anyway, put on the bands. And that's what we mean by this double stacking concept. So it be, it constantly does not become a barrier for exercise. It becomes an enhancer of what you're going to do anyway. Yeah. It's one of those things, you know, people realize, you know, I, I don't believe in multitasking, but the body does millions of things at once anyway. Every single cell is, yeah. you know, doing something with thousands of chemical processes and utilizing that in a way where you're going about your everyday life, but you're just switching that one piece to truly improve your health and performance. Correct. Now, I understand you guys have now a handheld device. Can you, yes. can you talk about that and how that works? Because it, it seems a little bit different, of course, that's handheld versus the bands themselves. Yes. So, um the bands are are pneumatic. They're, they're, they've got this air bladder inside. So they it's always needs to be filled up with air and then the air needs to be released every 30 seconds. And that's now usually through a, a cable, like a, a... Uh, through a connector tube, yes. just a, a very, a very small connector tube. Got it. And, and that allows the blood, I'm sorry, <laughs> that allows the air to go from the handheld unit through the connector tubes to inflate the pneumatic bands and 30 seconds of air in five seconds of air out and that continues that has been very popular that's sort of our workhorse model if you will 
But then we have a lot of people, especially as we're getting more and more into wounded warriors, people who are uh, paraplegic, quadriplegic, amputees, et cetera. And the cords, the connector tubes, were literally an impediment for people to uh, uh, to do something. Uh, again, we're talking about not Olympic athletes. We're talking about people who who had limited mobility or limited strength. So our latest model is simply a Bluetooth version where we have the bands, we have a compressor built into the bands, and the people use their mobile phone to actually activate the compressor on the bands. And that allows people to be much more mobile. You can have your 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 phone uh, up to 40 meters away. So you can be in one part of the house and you could be folding clothes on the other part of the house. You can be a soccer player who is, you know, practicing penalty kicks or uh, different plays, and they could put their phone at the, um, uh, uh, you know, in the midfield, yet the Bluetooth connection enables that band to inflate, deflate, inflate, deflate as you see it. Or you could be working in the office. You have your phone near your computer, but, you know, you're called into a conference room. Now, granted, most people don't use the bands in a conference room, but some people do. Um, And so uh, these handheld units or, or your phone is the mechanism to inflate the bands and then deflate the bands in the protocols that you see fit. That's pretty cool. Does it make a sound? Would, would, would people know in the conference room that you got your katsu on and that it's suddenly inflating and deflating? Yeah, well, <laughs> we've always given it away. <laughs> because some people want the beep. They want to know when the inflation is starting or ending. And some people don't want the beep. Yeah. So uh, more people wanted the beep than not wanted the beep. But now that we have many units out in the field, we have a lot of people who say, you know, I travel on an airplane mm. or I share a cubicle with somebody and they just don't like the beeps. What they do now is they put their jacket or, or a pillow over the unit so the beeps are muffled. But the the uh, the next unit, all the beeps will go away, and that'll be in April of, of this year. So um, you yeah, know, it'd be it'd be interesting to hear something beeping on a plane and not know what it is, and <laughs> you're sitting next to a person using Katsu and maybe thinking it's something else that's a little bit more worrying. Now, if you're a just a you know, first time here of Katsu, you want to go to the gym, use it. What what model would you recommend? You, we talked about the handheld model, of course, and we talked about that pro model that's tracking all that data. I know there are other models, but what's the kind of starting point? I, I would always advocate um, the Katsu C3. C stands for um, uh, 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 cycle. Three is the, our third generation. So we've gone through two generations. This is our third. It is our workhorse model. It's what the military uses. It's what most of the uh, professional and Olympic athletes have used. Um, It is used by a number of of, uh, people in their 80s, 90s, all the way up to 104. So, you know, this this model is is easy to use. You don't have to use an app. You know, it isn't too sophisticated and it gets the job done. So it's the Katsu C3, C as in uh, Charlie, C as in cycle and three is the the third generation yeah it's good to know as far as uh what's what's next for katsu any uh, developments anything exciting on the horizon uh we <laughs> we are just inundated by um requests uh, now we are a manufacturer so we can't you know give medical advice but i think one of the most satisfying um projects that we're working on is with amputees specifically military amputees so people above the elbow or above the knee uh, amputees and uh, they have either phantom pain or uh, residual limb pain and in many cases it's significant uh, they have to take a lot of, of, of painkillers uh, or they take uh uh, you know, illicit drugs or drink. I mean, it, it's really um, uh, problematic. We we weren't anticipating this uh, market for us, but it it amputees were coming to us and saying, 
this is a game changer. <laughs> this is a total game changer. And that is really satisfying because these are people through through war, through training, through accidents, you know, they've they've lost a limb. And not only have they lost a limb, they're dealing on a daily basis, hourly basis in pain. Mm -hmm. And here they are using katsu um, and the pain is either mitigated or eliminated. And we're, we're still trying to figure out, we, we have some theories and we think we know why it works, but it, you know, we want an independent researchers to confirm that but that is really really satisfying and we have a number of the uh, military um, units and support foundations out there just just saying you know can you send us more can you send us more and when we can help that 25 year old um, a guy who had an accident or that you know 30 year old navy seal who lost a leg that is really, really satisfying. And um, uh, so amputees is really one of the things that we've um, uh, come across. Uh, we didn't anticipate, but we we understand it works, not because we're marketing it, because the amputees are coming to us and saying, you know, the guy in my uh, platoon, he and I, you know, stepped in an IUD, we lost our legs and God, this is great. How can I get this to my fellow, uh, you know, uh, veterans or soldiers in the VA or in the, the Navy, the Army, Air Force, et cetera. So that's where we are. Yeah, an incredibly noble cause and project there. Stephen, where can people learn more about Katsu, purchase it, do their research? At, at our website, it's the Katsu, that's K-A-A, so two A's, K-A-A. TSU.com, one word, katsu.com. Just so people understand, what is this strange Japanese word? It it actually means two things. Uh, KA means additional, mm. and ATSU means pressure. Maybe many of your listeners have probably heard of the Japanese word shiatsu, a kind of massage. Well, she means hand, atsu means pressure. Katsu is a description of actually what it does, additional pressure. So kaatsu.com. Awesome. And and we got a Japanese lesson there. Oh, one of my favorite cultures. So I, I do love it. Uh, Stephen, really appreciate the time and uh, coming on the show. And I, I hope, uh, you know, this continues to go in the right direction. More and more people utilize this very, very, uh, you know, helpful technology. Yeah. Well, thank you to you. And thank you very much for taking the time to ask so many great questions. Thanks. As you heard, Katsu is a wonderful reminder that many of the most effective healing devices are also the simplest. Be sure to check out their products, and until next time, continue writing your own healing story. <laughs>